Hannes Minut is uh, well. I have a, a whole list of where's my list. <laughs> yep. I have a whole list of, of stuff that he does, and it's and it's too much to to read to you. So I just give you a few keywords. <coughs> he does uh, functional correctness proofs of object-oriented code, uh, development environments, or network protocols. That's what this talk is about. Uh, security protocols. Uh, this sentence is actually very nice. He feels safe in a garbage collected environment and appreciates purely functional goodness. Uh, in his spare time, he's uh, not only a hacker but also a co-author of a book on Indian cuisine and functional programming in JavaScript. So probably not the same book. It is. It is the same book. Okay. <laughs> Published by O'Reilly in Germany. Uh, nice. And he's also a barista. Like he likes to travel and repair his recumbent bicycle. Yeah, thank you. So I will uh, talk about uh, TCP IP, which is a uh, widely used internet protocol. And uh, this is uh, work I've been involved in for the past two years at the uh, University of Cambridge, but it is a much bigger project which uh, started much earlier and there are lots of contributors. So I listed them, uh, not likely not all of them, uh, but I listed a lot of them here. So it's mainly um, has mainly been initiated by uh, Peter Sewell and uh, Mike Norris. Uh, about myself, I'm a programmer since maybe uh, 20 years, starting with tool Pascal, then going down all the different uh, routes uh, I could imagine, like imperative programming, then a bit uh, object-oriented programming uh, with uh, dynamic uh, runtimes and so on. Um, but then I um, tried to do some formal verification, as uh, was earlier said, I, I did that uh, using a separation logic, um, a higher order separation logic and a, um, semantics or an embedding of that into Coq. And then we verified some Java-like language or some data structures written in a Java-like uh, language. I don't use Linux too much, but I use uh, FreeBSD, which is another Unix uh, uh, operating system. In recent years, and um, where this work, this TCP-IP work for me was uh, done, I was a postdoc at University of Cambridge uh, with uh, Peter Sewell. I'm also um, tightly involved in the Mirage OS project, which is an approach to um, get over Unix, so to develop a complete operating system from scratch in OCaml. Um, there was actually three years ago Ami Omadafidi who gave uh, the Bob keynote on that. Since uh, the start of this year I'm working at a non-profit uh, company here in Germany, here in Berlin, and my goal is to put Mirage OS into production, so I'm still looking for uh, both funding donations and uh, contracts. So what is uh, network programming all about? Um, I think, so in the Unix setting, we have this uh, Unix uh, sockets API, which uh, con con <coughs> condenses uh, a lot of uh, different protocols like IP, ICMP, UDP, and TCP, and so on. And, um, what are the, the features? So network communication uh, or network programming with the Unix sockets LP allows you to use uh, concurrency so you can handle multiple TCP flows at the same time or multiple UDP interfaces at the same time. Obviously you have, uh, you, you may have some packet loss on this un unreliable wire or on this even more unreliable wireless uh, connection which people are, known, uh, are using nowadays. You can have host failures and timeouts uh, because sometimes the uh, host just crashes and will never answer to you again. Um, those uh, wire protocols and parts of the API are actually described in so-called RFCs from the ITF. The ITF is the Internet Engineering Task Force and their goal is to um, specify, and by specify they mean write uh, some English prose where hopefully everybody understands the same or interprets the same into the uh, paragraphs. And they uh, write a lot of RFCs, requests for comments about the various protocols and wire formats. Um, but 
Those RFCs, I mean, they are not uh, formally specified. It's a very ambiguous and incomplete uh, description of each of the protocols. So there's uh, some <coughs> playroom or there's some uh, there's some freedom on how to interpret that. In addition to that, um, usually an initial RFC is uh, not uh, complete or people like hackers or attackers um, find some flaws in the actual protocol design or in the concrete uh, implementation and so it uh, is a moving standard so you move from a loosely specified one to something which has more best current practices or so or you have some concrete attacks on the protocol and you need to mitigate them in the impl implementation. Um, protocols are in general hard to design and implement correctly. It's even hard to test um, protocol because you have uh, usually some finite state machines and then some transitions and so on, but the state space is rather big. So in TCP, it's more than a uh, thousand bits in, in the TCP control block, which is the main um, data structure <coughs> in, in, in kernel. And then every TCP frame you have on the wire also adds another maybe 100 bit to the, um, to the mix. And um, yeah, TCP and uh, IP and other protocols, I mean, if you uh, have obscure corner cases, which are not described properly in the RFC, you might end up in trouble finding on how do people actually do that or how am I supposed to implement that. And I actually like all those challenges so since uh, quite sometimes I implement uh, network protocols. I started in, in a Lisp dialect in Dylan, which I, where I wrote in 2005 a TCP IP implementation. Then I wrote four years ago a TLS implementation in OCaml and now I'm back to work a bit on TCP IP, but this time I wanted to have a better implementation, so higher performance and uh, some considerable uh, test, uh, <coughs> testing done on it. And that's why I uh, joined this uh, project. Here's, uh, here's a description or a layering of uh, how TCP IP looks like. So we have on one side the OZ model layers, so that is uh, what, um, what some uh, people came up with, which would be a nice uh, abstraction for how to deal with uh, network programming. So you have at the <coughs> lowest layer, uh, physical layer, so you have uh, some wire like uh, this, this here, this is an Ethernet wire. <coughs> then you have a data link layer, which is if you connect two Ethernet devices uh, together. Then you have a network layer because you need to talk about the network or you need to talk over the network and you need to uh, congestion when someone is ready to send and when someone is uh, ready to receive. Then you have a transport layer. So you want to have maybe some reliable stream transport or so on. Then you have a session layer which is usually way higher up in the, in the hierarchy. So it's a complete protocol like a telnet or FTP but, or SSH or TLS, but you actually have a <coughs> session with uh, various properties with the communication partner. Then you have a presentation layer and an application layer, whatever OZ uh, says has. Um, the actual more, more real world, so TCP IP, uh, violates this, uh, these various uh, layers a bit because uh, physical layer and data link layer is uh, together the network interface layer which is uh, Ethernet or token ring. So then you have the internet layer and the internet layer um, co combines the internet protocol so IP together with uh, some address resolution protocol in order to communicate in a, in a broadcast domain. So in a network with multiple hosts, you need to have some sort of addressing that you want to send to the router only a, a packet or you want to send to everybody a packet. Then you have the host to host transport layers which are TCP and UDP and they have some different um, semantics or some different properties, so we'll talk about that. And then you have the application layer which uh, may be anything like Telnet FTP or DNS. 
Uh, what is uh, TCP-IP uh, concretely? It's uh, the main protocol used uh, on the internet, for the internet. It started uh, more than uh, 30 years ago. Uh, the internet protocol was initially in January 1980 uh, specified and then later uh, revised in, in another RFC. The internet protocol is a connectionless and best effort um, protocol for packet switch networks and how to transport packets on this packet switch network. Um, another standard is ICMP, which is the control message protocol, which also comes from 1981, so it's actually older than me. Um, and ICMP carries uh, control messages, which are either error <coughs> messages or organizational information, like what is on the path from you to the remote host, the uh, maximum transfer transferable unit. Then there's UDP and TCP. They are both on top of IP, as shown earlier. And UDP is a connectionless and unreliable uh, protocol, but you can have integrity of the messages, so there's a checksum. Um, TCP is uh, reliable and ordered, and you have error checking of uh, byte streams. So in TCP, the model of programming is rather you have a stream, a reliable stream, and in UDP, you just have uh, <coughs> some messages which come in in any order, if at all, because you don't know whether they actually went through or not. What is TCP? TCP and uh, Unix uh, API is, uh, or TCP and uh, Unix is um, the socket <coughs> API, which consists of uh, socket bind, listen, accept, uh, connect, send, receive, and then shut down and close. It's uh, t TCP segments are transported via uh, the internet protocol, so via IP, via Ethernet. It specifies connection setup and teardown, which is a complex final state machine. Then you also have a window size con uh, congestion control. So you, you have a window size, so if I receive a TCP session, then I need to specify to, to you how much space I will uh, give you on my uh, system until the application <coughs> which uses this TCP sockets actually reads from it. And the window is uh, negotiated continuously, which means that uh, over time your window may uh, shrink or extend depending on how the application on top of you is behaving on top of the TCP IP stack. The TCP IP state machine is uh, written in RFC 793, is uh, modeled here. So we start at the bottom, we start enclosed. And uh, once uh, we are enclosed, we can uh, send a SYN, which is this red line here, and are in SYN sent. And the red line here is the uh, client uh, connection. After SYN is sent, then you receive a, a SYN ARC, and you send an ARC, you are established, and so on. And then you have here the teardown automation. Uh, the teardown automator is here, the fin rate one, fin rate two, closing and time rate. Um, and the and the um, oh the the close weight in the last arc is also uh, part of the teardown automation, so part of the final state machine which uh, abstract uh, which uh, uh, cares about the teardown. Okay. Is it the same model of TCP specifically or TCP in the socket model? This is uh, TCP. Okay, so listen is uh, not socket state but really a TCP state. Yes. Um, what are implementation issues? Well, there are um, a friend of mine, you who is uh, writes a blog on those. He's working on a user space uh, TCP IP stack, and there's a long mystery of why are S3 downloads from S3, so from Amazon S3 on the, I think, Xbox are slow. And how various operating systems handle the reset packet. So it's a complex protocol, as I described. It is uh, roughly a dozen pot, uh, RFCs, and the state machine is, uh, well, that is the state machine from the RFC, so um, 
It doesn't look too complex, but we will see uh, later also that it is uh, not uh, correct or not um, complete. Um, TCP is extensible as well, so there are various extensions like uh, selective acknowledgement to um, limit the amount of um, packets needs to be set, uh, which need to be sent. Then TCP fast open to minimize the delay because people want to click fast on web pages and they don't want to um, have to wait a full uh, three-way handshake and multiple <coughs> round trips until the TCP session is there. Uh, then certainly IPv6 uh, influence CCP a bit as well. Uh, security, yeah, you have them everywhere and people always only come up with new exploits or new ways on how to um, deal with that. There's uh, congestion control, so you have various um, mechanisms. Initially it was uh, more <coughs> loss-based, like in uh, the new Reno algorithm. And this means that if a single frame, if, if a single segment is uh, lost, then you limit the throughput by uh, a large factor. New congestion control algorithms, I think uh, mainly uh, main, main innovations come from Google for uh, YouTube and, for, and, and from Netflix are uh, delay-based ones, so where you have a constant stream and if there is a loss, well, yeah, then there is a loss, it doesn't matter too much. Um, delay based ones are also much more uh, much, much getting much more traction in nowadays uh, networks because you have much more bandwidth and uh, lower delays and you are nowadays uh, a lot of people are in those uh, shared media like uh, 3G, 4G, 5G and wireless networks where it happens pretty commonly that uh, just a single segment is uh, lost because uh, you, are, you are on a shared medium, so if uh, two clients send at the same time, one of them, at least one of them is lost. Then testing, I was uh, elaborating on that a bit, that you have a pretty huge uh, test space. And how you test is mainly interoperability with uh, deployed stacks, so if you can, <coughs> can connect to Google, Facebook, and uh, maybe a third site, then it's all set and you can release it. Uh, what is a bug or how, how, if you have a bug in, in your TCP IP implementation, how does it manifest? It may be as an error in connection setup or teardown, which may be hard to reproduce or hard to, hard to find. Or it may be actually a bug which, uh, <coughs> which is inside of the window size uh, computation or the congestion control algorithm. Uh, which means you only get higher delay and uh, smaller windows, so less bandwidth. So if you have a bug in your implementation, you don't always see it as a real error, but you just uh, wonder, oh, why is it so slow? Why doesn't it work? And as I mentioned, also those RFCs, I mean, they are written in English uh, prose and they are not um, too relevant because the deployed stacks are much more relevant because if you can't talk to Google or to Amazon, then your stack is uh, considered to be broken, although you might just follow the RFCs. What is a security value well, yeah, for UDP? You have a lot of amplification attacks where the attacker um, spoofs the source address and awaits a uh, much bigger reply to a request uh, towards this uh, spoofed um, uh, IP address, <coughs> and then, uh, yeah, you get the denial of service. Then you have other security problems like uh, off the path attackers, like uh, someone on the wild can send you or could get send you in various uh, scenarios just a single TCP frame and you will drop the connection, which they only had to know the connection IPs uh, from. And yeah, there's some documentation on common implementation pitfalls for uh, TCP and, uh, and so on. So formal methods uh, to the rescue. Um, there's this uh, specification or this uh, formal model for TCP IP, which is called network semantics, which I'm presenting here. And it's, its goal is to be uh, clear and accessible to a broad community and easy to modify. How to achieve that? Well, they encoded all the rules into a labeled transition system. 
and wrote a lot of documentation and then wrote some processors to um, extract the documentation from, from that. They wrote it all in HOL4, which is a uh, higher order logic 4, and it generates a PDF, which is a PDF file, which is actually easier to read, at least for me, than um, the than the stash of RFCs which are around. Um, the model should be unambiguous and only specify the expected behavior. It should also be sufficiently loose because sometimes there are choice points like a TCP stack on a laptop may decide, oh, now I'm out of buffer space or out of uh, memory space, so I rather not accept any new connections. And you need to reflect that in the model that you can either drop the connection or you can go further and uh, establish a connection. Um, the formal model is also directly usable as a basis for conformance testing. They wrote an executor in standard ML, so HAL4 is implemented in standard ML, and they can drive the drive the symbolic execution of the model in, in, inside of standard ML. And it is uh, sort of validated with the real world by using um, tests and collecting traces and uh, then verifying that the collected trace uh, meets in the model or that the model meets the, um, the, the model would would be able to do the same transitions as the as were done in the trace. And if that doesn't meet it, then it's either a problem in the model or a problem in the implementation, or something which is unspecified and uh, need to be handled uh, specifically. The history, I uh, won't really uh, bother too much, but it started in the early 2000s and was targeting FreeBSD 4.6 and NIST 2.4. It's roughly 10,000 lines of uh, whole 4 code and maybe 20,000 lines of comments. Then they have uh, various uh, publications um, at various uh, venues, both in the systems and the, in the theory community. Um, the model, as I described, it's in all 4 It's a label transition system, so it's uh, states and uh, transition to a new state. Um, the label is either a duration, so time has passed because you need to do some sort of retransmission in TCP IP, you need to take care of the time and you need to track the time. Um, then um, another event may be that a segment was uh, sent or received and is now processed and that the uh, cha state changes. So the internal handshake machinery, as I showed, that it um, uh, switched to a new state. There are also some internal transitions of the, of the model. So the labels here, which I mentioned here, they are observable from the outside, but there are also some internal transitions. So if an, a packet which was arrived is uh, processed only afterwards and first put into a queue and then seconds later is processed or milliseconds later. Um, then you have various uh, configuration variables in TCP IP in, in TCP, which is the initial sequence number, for example, which is a 32-bit field and so on, and in the model it is uh, just existentially uh, quantified at the beginning. And as I mentioned, there's uh, an executable with, uh, which uses backtracking and uh, symbolically executes a model to validate a trace. What is an example rule here? This is point uh, five, and I will uh, make it a bit bigger. Maybe you can, maybe you even have a chance to read it. So here we have the uh, pre-state. So the state is a host state where we have some <coughs> where we, we we have some um, uh, thread states. Then we call uh, bind, and then we um, modify the whole state by adding uh, uh, another TID here and the value is the E and well. Then we have here some description <coughs> that uh, what what is actually happening and the file uh, and the conjunction of the different expressions in the logic system. 
So this all has been um, written down in Hall 4 code and then has been uh, used to generate latest code, which then was translated to PDF and I made a screenshot of it. And now it's a PMG. But this is basically how, how we get a bit that. That is one example in Rudel, which is also um, uh, similarly phrased uh, somewhere hidden in some of the RFC uh, deep down if you look uh, careful enough. So what is the test? So I told you we need uh, this uh, labeled transition system and now we want to test it. And um, tests are either written or have been initially written in OCaml, which were very ad hoc but had a very large uh, rule coverage. And now we are using uh, Packet Drill, which is a tool from uh, Google, published by Google, which uh, does expect-based testing for network uh, protocols. <coughs> Here's a sample Packet Drill script, which uh, does here some system calls. So it uh, starts here with a time, with uh, when this is supposed to be uh, happening. And it has a time epsilon of uh, whatever, how many milliseconds uh, it may uh, violate that. But at, uh, <coughs> at time zero, we call socket. We don't really care with what, but a stream socket, so a TCP socket. And as a result, we get a, we get a file descriptor. <coughs> then we set the socket option <coughs> SO debug on this uh, file descriptor, on this file descriptor one here. Uh, on file descriptor uh, three here and setting it to one. So we, we are using now a debug socket and debug socket is just uh, internally to actually get some tracing information out. Then we bind and expect it to return zero. Then we look for the uh, socket option of the receive buffer and expect it to be 65536. Uh, and then we are actually sending out a packet. We are now in the closed state after calling bind, as I showed in the transition diagram. And now we are um, receiving the SYN packet where the sequence and arc number is, uh, with the sequence number is 17 and the window is uh, 32K. And we are expecting to send back, so this is outgoing data, we are expecting to send back a reset packet with uh, the sequence number zero. And then we call the test and end <coughs> and uh, say close. So this is a description which has been developed by some network engineer who knows how TCP be should behave and uh, they wrote down as, uh, how it should behave, leaving long, uh, some ellipses which, which are then filled by the packet drill tool. So now we are using uh, this uh, very same script and uh, have some instrumentation using Btrace as uh, was uh, presented by Raishu just uh, before this talk in the other, <coughs> in the other room. And uh, Trace is now a series of events, um, both uh, POSIX system calls and TCP's uh, fragments. So incoming output, uh, outgoing fragments and also a duration uh, tag to each of those events. We can also possibly inject uh, TCP fragments from a remote host as shown here with the um, syn, syn frame which is uh, uh, done there. And then we also have some sometimes the output of the TCP control block the structure which is there. Um, I developed this uh, D-trace script which is uh, yeah, pretty minimal, uh, pretty large, and um, here it is uh, just a fragment of it, which is uh, I defined some macro called duration to keep track of the duration. <coughs> then as output, I use something which is uh, using uh, S expressions and is readable by um, Hall four. Just also, I mean, I didn't change the format. Then you can see here some example probes. So on socket entry, we print that uh, socket was called with the correct argument. And then when socket returns, we uh, also emit a, an event which is a return of uh, the specific uh, socket call. 
So now we have here a collected trace. So when running the packet rule script and the D trace on the same host, we basically end up with uh, a huge trace, which uh, consists of uh, all the events, as I uh, was showing. It has a lot of duration events, then uh, calls, and then those trace events, which contain the TCP control block. We can even render that a uh, bit more nicely in a um, PDF, so using LaTeX and a segment chart, and we see that uh, here the SYN is received and here the reset is uh, sent out. And all the tooling has been developed within the project. Now we also um, have the checker, and the checker <coughs> actually checks the trace, so it starts at the first event and tries to uh, find a rule which matches this host state and how to trim <coughs> Uh, how to transient into the next uh, into the next state, and the checker output is uh, then generating huge uh, HTML with uh, some JavaScript, and in the end, uh, it is successful if the last uh, event has been processed. Processed. What is uh, ongoing work? There are a more tests, and then validate more stacks. Um, implement more features like uh, congestion control, well, abstract out congestion control in order to support various implementations thereof. I'm also working on a TCP IP implementation in OCaml. That was my main motivation be behind this project to have a test suite and a test validator for a new TCP IP implementation to, to be used on Mirage OS. Then I also want to do some test coverage about uh, both uh, the model and the stack. In the model, we can just uh, uh, count which rules have been hit, but obviously um, a rule is uh, just a conjunction or disjunction, so we might be a bit more uh, more fine-grained. Um, so we hope to be a bit more fine-grained. And test coverage of stack, well, you can use uh, GCAP or so to uh, evaluate the coverage. What are the results? Well, there are lots of anomalies found. I mean, we don't find bugs because, I mean, it, it is not a bug. It is a deployed uh, networking code which works out there in the internet. Um, so it is, uh, in, back in 2005, they found maybe three dozen anomalies in the FreeBSD implementation. And I'm slowly fixing each of them or rechecking each of them and try to fix them upstream. So upstream in the FreeBSD project. A lot of them are out of date because they have been fixed uh, since then. I also had to um, fix the whole model because it was uh, incomplete and it didn't cope with the um, newer, uh, newer implementations of uh, TCP IP. So with the revisions of the implementations which grew uh, on having a bigger initial window size because nowadays computers have much more memory than uh, 30 years ago. And uh, one main outcome is also an enhanced state machine diagram, which is um, which I will show here. So we we are used to to that one. This is what I uh, <coughs> showed earlier, and now it is actually a bit more complex. There are lots of more transitions, and it's not even complete here. So there are still some transitions me uh, missing, like uh, some timers and so on. But you see, there are lots of more errors and so on. So this um, English uh, description of uh, some protocol is uh, not complete. And if you want to implement it, you have to basically implement all of that, because otherwise you are incomplete and you don't want to have a, a thing which uh, cannot handle a certain segment in a certain state, or which um, just keeps to have a certain state in memory forever which means why you need uh, <coughs> why, why you need even timeouts and so on. Other works, I will uh, skip over them due to find. So to conclude, it's a lot of work to formalize real world protocols, but it is possible. And uh, what is the outcome? The outcome is uh, readable specification with uh, type setter transition rules. Lots of uh, bugs were discovered, like in FreeBSD, after sending 32 gigabytes of data, then you had a small uh, time frame where something was not checked, and so on. 
And that is uh, things you don't really find by using testing or fast testing or so, but you have to really have a, a mental model of uh, what could <coughs> happen here. And it was an overflow of some uh, number somewhere deep inside the stack. Um, there's a draft submission for the Journal of the ACM, which we submitted in November or December last year, which is uh, available on the internet. Other advertisements, as I said, I'm working on this Mirage project where we will uh, have a retreat soon again in Marrakesh. If you're interested, uh, come talk to me. There's still some beds available. Uh, the website of Mirage is uh, mirage.io, and then I'm working on uh, Robur.io for this nonprofit I'm currently employed at, and I'm blogging at uh, hannes.nqsb.io, which is NQSB stands for not quite so broken. And I mainly talk about uh, how to use uh, functional programming in a real world uh, scenario and how to get over this uh, area of Unix uh, operating system. That's all from me. Thank you. Um, this project has a decent set of test cases which you can actually run against your stack and then validate whether your stack behaves uh, the same as uh, other existing stacks. And uh, one stack we actually tested is the FreeBSD uh, TCP IP stack as an example. But yes, uh, that's that's basically it. And you can also, if you, if you want to implement uh, TCP IP, you can instead of reading this uh, RFCs which come in, uh, yeah, there are lots of different RFCs which maybe update each other and so on. And in, instead of reading through all of them and trying to find all the um, updates, uh, you can also read the PDF which, uh, which uh, <coughs> covers all the RFCs. Anyone else? How useful would this approach be to other communication stacks, or is it just TCP IP? <coughs> and so this is um, <coughs> this concrete project has uh, only covers TCP IP, but you can same uh, you, you can use the same mechanism and the same uh, base base layer basically. So some part of the um, whole four codes uh, can be reused in other protocols and also the approach which uh, was taken can be reused like having an executable model and be able to, to validate against the real world <coughs> anyone else? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the short answer is yes, and there's, uh, let me. And one, then, uh, if the short answer is yes, um, then what's it worth to have a correct implementation if it can communicate with other uh, players on the net? Um, How Oh, the, 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 the goal of the specification is to um, yeah. cover the, the real world, so to cover the yeah. deployed TCP IP stack. So it's not the, the R RFC that yes. you're following, but the actual... Yes, so it, it started out that project without me being involved by uh, trying to do the, uh, trying to start with RFCs, 
but that didn't work out uh, in the real world too, too well. Too well. Yeah. So nowadays it's more like uh, trying to find uh, what is the uh, concrete implementations and where are they are potential <coughs> bugs. And we found various of those bugs in the FreeBSD implementation. And I believe in other implementations there are still some, some bugs uh, uh, lingering around. And then the follow up would be uh, how many implementations are there and how compatible are they and which of them are interesting to you? Um, how many implementations are there? I don't know. But it's there is uh, certainly the, the Linux one, the FreeBSD one, the Windows one, the MacOS one is uh, basically a fork of the FreeBSD one which has been uh, modified here and there. Um, then for embedded systems there's a bunch of them and then uh, nowadays every other program language also uh, comes with their own TCP IP stack. There's a project uh, to write a TCP IP stack in 100 lines of Python. And I'm pretty sure this is uh, not uh, complete and not... Uh, mainframes. Hmm? mainframes also. Mainframes also. Well, they, yeah, if, if they are up to TCP IP yet and uh, are not using uh, something else, then yes. And what is interest here, uh, in, interesting for me is, for example, to um, get the semantics of the congestion control and the congestion algorithms up there because these are real bugs which are happening out there and people like uh, Netflix people are interested in uh, finding those bugs and to discover how to behave uh, nicer in, in a way or behave better. So I think that's it. The time is also over now.